Well, it's February 6th. We're just barely outside of January. And this is the earliest boil we've ever done. Um, it's a bit of a weird year. Um, I got some thoughts on that. But right now, I'm just gonna get everything set and uh, make sure we're good to go before I go to bed tonight. And tomorrow will be the big boil day. But yeah, just checking in before I uh, get going. Hey guys, this is the earliest we have ever tapped and had a boil for maple syrup. We put our first taps in January and we even had a 50 degree day in January this year. And I know a lot of people are saying this is climate change and a lot of people are saying, no, it's not climate change. Generally, I think there's two ways to approach this. One is to say man is completely controlling their surroundings, which I think is a little arrogant. The other is to say that our surroundings are too big and we can't affect them, which I think is a bit ignorant. Remember, it wasn't that long ago when we thought the oceans were infinite, we could not overfish them, we could not dump too much trash into it because it would never make a difference. And briefly, we understand that carbon is a greenhouse gas and that the quantity of carbon in the atmosphere is vary throughout time as well as the global temperature average. Granted, this year we have a strong El Nino effect, which is causing these warmer than normal temperatures for our winter, at least here in the UP. So somewhere in between the ignorant and the arrogant is the truth, and I think that's where we need to live when we look for answers for why the temperatures are different this year, and what our future will look like. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get back to uh, making syrup. I got a lot of time to think about stuff today. I got about 12 hours of boiling to go, and then tomorrow we'll finish up. It is February 7th today, and we put taps in about a week ago. And I thought it would be interesting to talk about why we tap so early this year and what we look for in the weather. The first thing I want is a freeze-thaw cycle. This means that at some point, temperature drops below freezing for a period of time, and then rises above freezing for a period of time. After going all winter with temperatures below freezing, the first warm day comes and no sap flows. Why is that? Then it freezes again and the second warm day comes and sap flows. I think that's pretty cool and this is what's going on. It's because of pressure. Think of the maple tree as a great big turkey baster. All winter it sits around empty in a drawer and then the first warm day comes and you take it out of the drawer and you squeeze the bulb. At night, when it's colder, you release your grip and liquid gets sucked up into the treetops. This is the first warm cold cycle. The tree is now primed and ready to run. If it stays cold, the baster will remain full. But if it warms up again, it's like squeezing the bulb and the sap will flow back down the tree and into your collection buckets or bags. Now, our decision to tap in January was based off of two things. First, there was no snow touching the bowl of the tree. Bowl is B-O-H-L. It's, uh, what that is is it's the bottom of the tree where the roots start to flare out. With no snow touching that area, it means that the tree is now basically metabolically active, meaning stuff is going on inside the tree, liquid is being moved around. Second, we look at the 10-day forecast. 
if half or more of those days have a high above 40 degrees, there's gonna be a freeze thaw cycle. And there's a good chance that we should be tapping. We only need about a week to get enough sap for a boil. Once those two things are met, we're good to go. Um, yeah, it's about a month early, and if we were looking at just the calendar, we would have totally missed this first run. Another thing to look at or to think about is when trying to predict whether the sap is gonna flow or not, is think of it as a system with a great big reset button. When it gets really cold, that's the reset button. Now you can reset a little bit or reset a lot, a lot of variables, but that cold is the reset button. That means the tree is ready to run. When it gets warm, how long it stays warm for, or how warm it gets, is gonna depend how the flow goes. But you can't have a flow unless you reset everything. That's just kind of the way I look at it. So if you have a really good reset, it might flow great for two days, but that first day might barely be anything. If it's just a little bit of a reset, it might flow immediately as soon as it gets warm, but not last very long. And of course, if you want to get picky, there's, there's wind, there's sun, maybe atmospheric pressure. Could be a bunch of small things coming into play too. But I just like to think of it as a reset button. It's got to reset before it flows. I usually don't collect, that's usually dad. I'm usually just the boil guy, but kind of running ahead of schedule and uh, I don't want to run out of sap. So, I'm gonna go give it a try. So this is kind of our system. Usually there's more snow on the ground and it's a bit more of a effort, but we'll take two bags trade them out kind of like that pretty easy and then whoa, we'll hang one and dump the other there we go And then uh, go get two more. So normally we can go with two bags, one in each hand. You can grab it, pick it up, flip it around, and put the other one on. And there you go. tank's not quite level, but I think we can count that as about 60 gallons. There's still quite a few more taps to go. With everything going quite well, 3.30 came around and I decided to take the drone up for a flight. I was hoping to catch my parents arrive on the road, but somehow they snuck past me. But that's okay. When dad arrived, I showed him the drone and then decided to get a little more practice filming while he collected some sap. This is the last of the sap for this boil, bringing our total to about 430 gallons.
boiled off a bit over 300 gallons so far. And uh, Dad's just doing one last collection for this batch. Here's a, uh, yeah, let's go take a look at the setup this year. This is our main tank, 275 gallons. And then there are three bins or trash cans. They're clean that we use for overflow. Right now I have collected some permeate and those two I'll use that for flushing the RO at the end of the season. Nothing too crazy here. There's a water pump that we use to offload from the side by side. Put it in the tank. You can see our various tools. Um, I believe there's a switch somewhere. Yeah, right here. There's a little on off switch for the pump. This is outflow for the RO. That's just pure water. That's why it looks so blue. There's nothing in it. And then the RO is right here. <clears throat> Been over this before, but there's five membranes on this. I have some onboard storage attached. It's on wheels, which makes it super nice to wheel back and forth at night because I don't want it to freeze when it gets cold. A little TDS meter on there. Helps me identify when it's time to, uh, when the flush is over. And of course, a 5 micron filter, pressure gauge, and all of my needle valves. And this does a little bit. It's not really crucial, but I pick up a few degrees Fahrenheit by running the uh, inline. So this is the sap, comes in, heats up, goes out close to the RO, and uh, get a little bump in efficiency. Not a whole lot to write home about, but since I built it, I'm gonna use it. And this is our blower. Just a real simple inline fan. There's a AC-DC converter in there, and then a rheostat. So this, well actually motor speed controller. So this varies the speed. Stainless exhaust pipe into the fire, and it's if it fits, it burns. I match the outflow to our boil rate into the preheater pan, and then we drip it into the main boil pan. So, just kind of nice having a little bit of a buffer. And that is the setup this year, pretty much the same as last year. Oh, one last thing. Inside, I keep track on the iPad, my spreadsheets, and then I have some cheater sheets here of different numbers that I like to uh, keep track of. So I use the 500 milliliter beakers to measure my flow. So I have a chart, how many seconds is what flow. Uh, just a reference the pans, the depth to gallons, so I know how much is in the pan. Well, I'll use this page for finishing. And then just a quick little refresher in case I forget what all the valves are for. And lastly, some instructions uh, for how to operate the RO. Kind of nice having it all as a cheat sheet. That way there's really nothing to research. Everything's right there. Real simple. And uh, there you go. That's the setup for uh, 2024. A real YouTuber would show themselves eating this delicious caramel apple pasty. Maybe someday. start a little later on finishing morning it's light out now sun's been up for almost an hour took the drone for a flight because it was super pretty and uh, yep gonna get the RO flushed and put away for the season or at least till the next boil and get the fire going
two gallons for two minutes. And then I can put it away. Look at that. Dad got some stronger, better clips for this year. Probably pick those up right the day after we finished last year, so we'd be ready. There we go. Almost there. We got the small bubbles that pop instead of the foam. Fifty six and a half. It's not yeah, it's not going like super fast, so I think it's, it's all... fine. But you might want to check it. I can put in some canola oil if you want, but it should be right after this that it should be ready. Once that once the bubbles calm down, I think. Let's see, five, six. Oh my gosh, it's like right there. Hang on. Oh yeah, if you pick it up, it'll. <laughs> yeah, we're there right now. Well then, pour up, put on the snow. So yeah, put the snow on. Are you ready to go? Oh, he's got to bring more snow first. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Otherwise, I'll keep cooking. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. Oh, no. Ugh. That's all right. I'm an athlete. How much did we get total here? Your dad said nine and three quarter gallons. We just couldn't make 10? Nope, just under. And that was 430 gallons of sap, too. That wasn't the, uh, the sweetest sap we've had. I guess not. Well, that's a wrap. Um, just a little bit afternoon here. Everything's cleaned up. And as you can see, the weather is starting to turn. We're supposed to get rain in the next hour. So overall, I think this went very well, even though it's February. Barely not January. And it's warm this is really weird anyway that's a wrap um boil number one of 2024 maybe the only boil thanks for watching